What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting the Steam Deck's APU up against Intel's new Core Ultra Series 2 chip. Now we will be running at a 15 watt TDP on both of these devices. After all, Steam Deck maxes out at that 15 watt TDP mark. But I've had a lot of people asking about this and there's no doubt that Intel's new Core Ultra Series 2 chips are actually really efficient. We've actually heard of a few manufacturers who will be coming to the market with handhelds powered by this new chip, and we've got a brand new iGPU here, known as the Intel Arc 140V. In this video, I've got a few things to go over and a lot to test, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price on down to $21.86 for a full Windows 11 Pro key. They're going to email you that key, and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from Settings, we're going to go to Activation Settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed, so we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose Next. It's going to activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. This new Intel iGPU actually has 8 XE2 cores, so it's an upgrade from the previous generation. And the chip we're going to be testing against the Steam Deck's APU is the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. I think this is going to be a very similar chip that we're going to see in handhelds, so I figured we'd see what kind of gaming performance we could get out of it at those lower TDPs. Now, if you want to see what this new iGPU can really do, I've got a video. I'll leave a link for it in the description. But let's go ahead and get right into this one. Like I mentioned, we're going to be testing the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. Eight cores, eight threads. And when you compare this to the first generation Core Ultra, we're kind of low on that core count and thread count. But it more than makes up for it in efficiency and even performance here. This ZenBook S14 has 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5X at 8,533 MHz. This is on package RAM, so with these new Core Ultra chips, Series 2, RAM is packaged with the CPU. But the main claim to fame, in my opinion here, is the new Arc 140V GPU. 8 XE2 cores, this will clock up to 1950 MHz. Performance here is well above the first generation Core Ultra with this iGPU, and you see we've got 16 gigs dedicated. And out of the box with my ASUS, we do have a few different performance modes that we can use. We've got Whisper Mode, Standard, Performance, and Full Speed Mode. Now in Full Speed Mode, this will do up to 37 watts, but since we're facing this off against the Steam Deck, I'm going to be using a third-party application known as Throttle Stop to set this at a 15 watt TDP. It's going to make it fair, and of course, with this thing maxed out at 37 watts, it's going to outperform the Steam Deck. But I wanted to go watt for watt against that custom APU in the Steam Deck OLED just to see how efficient this is. There are some major differences here between the Steam Deck's APU and the Core Ultra 7 here. For instance, over on the Steam Deck, we've got an AMD APU based on Zen 2. It's got 4 cores, 8 threads, and it'll clock up to 3.5 GHz. With the new Core Ultra 7 258V, we've got 8 cores, 8 threads, up to 4.8. When it comes to the GPU, over on the Steam Deck, it's based on RDNA 2. It's got 8 compute units and goes up to 1600 MHz. The Ultra 7 we're working with here has the new Intel Arc 140V. This has 8 XE2 cores and it'll clock up to 1950 MHz. Now I don't think that at a 15 watt TDP we're going to see those kind of clocks on the CPU and GPU with this new Core Ultra. I do think we'll need a little more wattage to get up there, but just to make everything fair, I really wanted to see what we could do at 15 watts with this new Core Ultra chip. And of course, when it comes to RAM, we're working with much faster LP DDR5X RAM. And with these new Core Ultra chips, it's actually packaged along with the CPU. So it's much different from what we've seen in the past. But over on the Steam Deck, we've got LP DDR5 running at 6400 MHz. First thing I wanted to get out of the way was a CPU benchmark using Geekbench 6. At the top, we've got the Steam Deck's APU. Single core, 1,229. Multi, 3,479. As you can see, that new Core Ultra 7, even at a 15-watt TDP, does beat it out by quite a bit in single and multi-core. 
But the main thing we want to take a look at here is GPU performance. So let's test out a few games here. I went with a few games that are Steam Deck verified and a few games that aren't Steam Deck verified but are known to work on the Steam Deck. This is a newer one. We've got Black Myth Wukong. We're at 720p low settings and on the Steam Deck, we've got FSR set to balanced. On the Intel chip, we're using XESS set to balanced. I wanted to give both their own scaler and, you know, FSR is made by AMD, XESS is made by Intel, so theoretically they should work better with their own chips. And there is at least one game here that didn't have XESS, so I used FSR. But with Black Myth Wukong, Steam Deck came ahead. We got an average of 53 FPS on the Steam Deck OLED and 51 over on the Core Ultra 7 258V. Next up, we've got Forza Horizon 5 720p medium settings. And usually when I test this against the Steam Deck using basically any other iGPU on Windows, the Windows chip usually comes ahead, mainly because it's a Microsoft game and obviously they do want it to perform better over on Windows. But this was pretty interesting because at the end of this benchmark, Steam Deck came ahead at 55 FPS versus the Core Ultra 7 at 53. Here's Shadow of the Tomb Raider using the built-in benchmark, 720p medium settings, and I've been doing a lot of testing with this new Arcai GPU. This game actually seems to perform really well with it. So it's an older one, but it's still one I always like to throw in these benchmarks because it does really kind of give us an idea of performance. And once the benchmark was finished, we had an average of 46 over on the Steam Deck's APU, and the Core Ultra 7 came way ahead with an average of 60. So it's looking pretty good, but again, I mentioned that this game does work really well on these new Arcai GPUs. With Horizon Zero Dawn, I actually went back and tested this a few times because the performance I was getting here with this Core Ultra was way under what the Steam Deck was giving us. I mean, it was pretty insane what kind of frame rates we got on that. They were really low when you compare it to the Steam Deck. And just going into the game with that FPS counter on, I knew that that Steam Deck was going to come ahead. I went through three different times just trying to see if something was an issue, rebooted the system. But at the end, Steam Deck, 66 FPS, and that Core Ultra 7 way behind it, coming in with an average of 37 FPS. It still amazes me what the Steam Deck can do, even though that GPU is based on RDNA 2. I mean, in the wild right now, we've got the RDNA 3.5 i GPUs. Just pretty awesome how well optimized it is. I also tested out Cyberpunk 2077, 720p Steam Deck preset, and with the Steam Deck preset over on the deck itself, it takes FSR to balanced, so I used XESS set to balanced over on the Intel chip. Steam Deck came in with an average of 39 FPS, and that Core Ultra 7 an average of 49. This is one that I've been testing a lot in Windows with these new Core Ultra chips, and I think they kind of made it a point to have this game perform pretty well out of the box when you consider how badly it performed on the first gen Core Ultra. And the final game I tested here was Hogwarts Legacy. No built-in benchmark, but I still wanted to get an idea of which one performed better. And it's obvious just by this gameplay footage that the Steam Deck is outperforming that Core Ultra 7. 720p medium settings. Looks like we're getting an average of around 43 FPS on the Steam Deck and an average of around 36 on the Intel chip. When it comes down to it, I think these new Core Ultra chips are much more efficient than the first generation. And, you know, they did take away a lot of cores. That first gen had 16 cores and 22 threads. And for a thin and light laptop or even handhelds, that's definitely overkill. They've taken it down to 8 cores, 8 threads. And this new iGPU based on Arc XE2 does outperform the first gen. I do think we're going to see better performance down the road out of this. And it's not doing a bad job the way it is. At a higher wattage, yeah, you can get some great performance out of this thing. I've actually made a video. I'll leave a link in the description. But I still wanted to kind of put this up against the Steam Deck. And they really did trade blows with each other. But with those Steam Deck verified games, at that 15 watt TDP mark, the Steam Deck is still really coming ahead. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this Core Ultra chip, just let me know in the comments below. And if you want to check out the video I made running at a higher TDP, I did test out about 10 AAA games. I'll leave a link for that in the description. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.